Hello fellow travellers, or should I say hello to you personally? Or perhaps I'm just speaking to myself, which actually I am right now. Four years ago I was sitting with a friend, stroke coach, who sometimes supports me on my life's journey and we were discussing how best to share what I knew from experience. And there arose a thought, go and speak at Speaker's Corner in London. I'd never spoken in public before, but I just felt a calling to do so and I went armed with my sign, which read everything is okay on one side and don't believe anyone, including me, on the other. I expanded my performances to central London when it dawned on me that if there really was freedom of speech, why should it be limited to Sunday in a tiny corner of one city? Two years later, in May 2009, I met Charlie Veach, who introduced me to the megaphone and filming, and the rest is history. I didn't plan for things to be like this, but this is how they've turned out, and now it seems that when I put up a video on YouTube, hundreds if not thousands of people seem to show an interest and watch within a few days depending on the subject. I have met hundreds of amazing people on the way who have added to my pool of fabulous friends that I had previously. One of the amazing people I met goes by the name of Du, and we met last January by coincidence at the Inspiral Lounge in Camden, one of my favourite joints. They serve great food, including raw and organic, and it's made with love. Check it out when you're in London. He was actually planning to meet Charlie, but fate would have it, we met instead. We had a long chat and ended up going to each other's court cases and becoming friends over the past year and a half. A few weeks ago we started making videos of our conversations for YouTube, which many of you have seen. Then at the start of May, Do suggested that I invite people via YouTube and Facebook to a meeting on the 12th of May for people interested in the free man subject, which I was delighted to do. I am interested in it, although I am far from fully understanding it. Around 80 people showed up, and of those, 10, including Do and his friend Toby Y, walked to a beautiful place in the area after the meeting which was a bit like Stonehenge, and sat and talked by the fire all night long. I enjoyed the meeting and the subsequent gathering, but when I got home I had had no sleep and was buzzing a bit and started to look back at what I had experienced. I realised now that having no sleep, which I'm not used to, blurred my judgement and my memory. I started to feel uncomfortable about what I'd remembered had happened, and I called a friend. I realised now that what I had told the friend was not accurate due to the lack of sleep and I started to panic. The panic led me to put up the previous two videos on Sunday, which some of you may have seen, although they are now taken down. And these videos may well have led people to a state of confusion, which is not necessarily a bad thing because confusion can lead to the opening of the mind and force people to look within for their own answers rather than seeking answers from external sources like people, books, the internet, etc. But they may also have led to the impression that Do is a dangerous guy and that he can't be trusted and that generally he's some sort of bad guy. The films also insinuated that he had some dark revolutionary plan. At this stage, I want to take a moment to speak to some people who may or may not exist outside of my imagination. Paid trolls who watch these videos. Actually, some would say that nothing exists outside of my imagination, so in a sense, I'm talking to myself, and always am. And of course, as I said before, right now, I am actually talking to the camera, and ultimately to myself. So I want to ask you guys, if you exist, what on earth are you doing watching this video, being paid by my, our taxpayers' money? When I think about it, I don't know whether to laugh or cry. Here I am a guy from a middle-class background who's been sharing some of what he sees as the insanity of our so-called civilization in a comedic way. I'm clearly a peaceful man and yet I feel like I'm being watched. All the while, the people in power are allowing really questionable things to happen all over the world for really questionable reasons. People are dying and getting maimed as a result of these decisions being taken by our leaders at a massive cost to the economy, ecology, and of course to the people themselves, both British and foreign. And yet all eyes seem to be on harmless people like me, who care about our planet and all of life on it. And you've made some inroads with me. I am scared that you're going to come and get me. 
The real motivation for making those two videos on Sunday was that I was panicking that the police would literally come round to my house and arrest me for being friendly with a guy who was planning to stand up for himself in court. Admittedly, I'd misunderstood what his plan was. It's not even a plan. It's more like a path that he's on. But essentially, all he wants to do is to stand up in court and not be silent like a stupid child, which is the way most people have to be in court, especially if they're represented by a lawyer. And it seems that in court, the judges, barristers and lawyers prefer it if you just shut up and let them get on with playing the game. So yes, if you do exist, you've scared me in various ways. And if you do exist and are watching this now, I realise that like so many others, you're just doing your job. And I wonder whether you're willing to question that job and question who is paying you and why and who is at the top of the chain of command. If you don't exist, I've scared myself and that fear led to these films. I've found from experience that whenever I act out of panic, fear and, or anger, which are rooted in the same energy, I end up having to repair the damage, which is why I'm making this video. I realise now that by trying to defend myself, my family and my sanity, I endangered Do's life and family. I'm very fond of both Do and his partner and had no intention of hurting them, and they know that, but the fear clouded my judgement. I do feel out of my depth often when Do speaks about certain things and I struggle to stand in my own authority on many occasions with many different people. We're not trained to stand in our own authority, so I'm having to slowly educate myself to stop putting people on pedestals and to find my own truth. The last thing Do wants is to be put on a pedestal. Do's path is a fascinating one. I'm not sure I'm strong enough at this time to fully embrace it. I suspect that many of you watching would be more ready than I am. Often I see myself as a little kid in an adult body trying to figure out what's really going on and trying to figure out whether it's even worth trying to figure out what's really going on. And in the past four years there have been occasions where I've brought things upon myself only to feel frightened and wanting to back out like when I wanted Charlie to take down all the videos. So I invite you to watch the meeting for yourself if you so wish. The link for part one is below, and decide for yourself what is right for you. And I send blessings to all of you, including the police and other agents, and including Du and Tara, and pray that we can together raise our own consciousness and that of others, and heal our beautiful planet, so that we can all move towards living in a sane, peaceful, enlightened world. And now for the weather.